Back in May 2020, Robert Pattinson had the internet in an uproar when he said he wasn't going to be working out for his role in the Batman. Even going as far to say that if you're working out all the time, you're part of the problem. But then the first trailers for the Batman dropped, and Robert, while not looking like most comic book actors, definitely looked like he'd been training. So then, in January 2020, another article came out, with Robert Pattinson saying that he was only joking about not working out, and obviously you need to train for a role like the Batman. And then the movie actually came out, and it was amazing. The fighting was intense, and Batman looked badass. But it left people divided on one thing. Was Robert Pattinson too small to realistically play Batman? Well, we're gonna find out. In this video, I'll be presenting the three best arguments for and against Robert's physique being live action Batman appropriate. Let's start off by defending our boy Robert with the first argument for his physique being up to par. Robert's Bruce Wayne is built like an MMA fighter. In the comics, Bruce Wayne is a master of pretty much every style of fighting known to man. Boxing, Aikido, Karate, Muay Thai, you name it. Sure to sound like an MMA fighter to me. So it makes sense to compare him to mixed martial arts masters in the UFC. So what do MMA fighters in Batman's weight class actually look like in real life? Well, Batman is usually listed as being around 6 foot 2 and 210 pounds, which would land him at the bottom of the heavyweight class in the UFC. Of course, we see all different kinds of physiques in the heavyweight class. Some looking more like bodybuilders, while some have less noticeable muscle mass with more body fat. Robert Pattinson has a large frame standing at 6 foot 1, so it makes sense that he wouldn't look like a gigantic bodybuilder. But if you were to mix him in with a group of these heavyweight fighters, I'd say he'd blend right in. In the movie, he looks muscular without being super jacked like a lot of these heavyweight fighters. He's definitely got some muscle mass, but it's underneath a solid layer of fat. And that's what a lot of these heavyweight fighters look like in real life, so it's a pretty good argument to start out with. But the Batman isn't real life, it's a comic book movie. So the first argument against Robert's physique is that it's not comic book accurate. In the Batman, Robert is playing a year two Batman, so it makes sense that he wouldn't be as big as someone like Ben Affleck's Batman, who's been lifting weights and fighting crime for two decades. But he'd still be pretty built after two years, right? Well, let's see what the comics have to say. We can see that while being on the smaller side for a comic book Batman, year two Batman still has a solid amount of muscle mass and crazy muscular definition as well. So when directly compared to the comics, Robert is definitely falling short. But well, those are comic books, so of course he's not going to be that jacked, right? Well luckily, we have another early career live action Batman to compare Robert to, Christian Bale. In Batman Begins, Christian Bale is playing a pre-Batman Bruce Wayne for much of the early movie, and his physique is much more on par with what we're seeing in the comics, albeit a more realistic version because of course Christian Bale is a real human being. He's not insanely lean, but still has really good definition because of the solid amount of muscle mass that he has. So thanks to Bale, we know it's 100% possible to build a physique that's a good real life version of what we see in the year 2 Batman comics. But that leads us right into our second argument for Robert's physique. Robert didn't want to feed into the unrealistic body standards created by Hollywood actors using steroids to prep for their comic book roles. So going back to the last point on Christian Bale looking more comic book accurate, while people can 100% look like he did naturally, there's a good chance Christian Bale was using some sort of performance enhancing drug for his Batman transformation. Because remember, before Batman Begins, he was playing in the movie The Machinist, where he lost like 100 pounds to play a malnourished insomniac. So for Batman Begins, he had to gain all that weight back and go from this to this. So it wouldn't be surprising if he used a little something something to help with that process. And going off of what Robert Pattinson said in that 2020 interview, he seemed to be hinting at the fact that steroid use in Hollywood was something he was really against. In the interview, Robert said that he thinks people who exercise frequently are part of the problem. And as an actor, if you do, you set a precedent. He went on to say that no one was doing that in the 70s. Even James Dean, he wasn't exactly ripped. Many take these comments as Robert's low-key way of voicing his disapproval of the widespread use of steroids in Hollywood and how this widespread use sets an unhealthy precedent that all actors are compared to. And I 100% agree, take Christian Bale. Because of his insane Batman transformation and physique, all future live action Batman actors are going to be held to his super high standard when it comes to their physiques. Possibly pushing actors to use steroids that negatively affect their long term and short term health just to try and keep up. Furthermore, imagine if Batman came out in the 70s. I don't think Robert Pattinson's physique would be breaking news whatsoever. It's only because of the high standard that has been set by people like Christian Bale and Ben Affleck that we as an audience have become highly critical of other actors' physiques. When in reality, would the Batman really have been that much better if Robert Pattinson got all juiced up and had an 8-pack? I'm not so sure. But that leads us right into our next argument against Robert's physique. You don't need steroids to get into amazing shape. 
Robert and his fans present the argument of him not wanting to take steroids as a good reason for him not to be in great shape. But you 100% do not need to take steroids to get into shape. Are you going to look like Mr. Olympia or Batman from the comics naturally? No, but given enough time with a solid training program and diet plan, you can look pretty damn good. While Robert's physique might be realistic to what MMA fighters really look like in real life, we don't go to see comic book movies to get a taste of real life. We want to see larger than life characters that inspire us and make us want to better ourselves. And some people feel like Robert could have brought a more impressive and inspiring physique to the table if he would have taken his diet and training more seriously. And he could have done it without the use of any steroids whatsoever. This is a sentiment that I can sympathize with. But if Batman were real, how would he be training? Well, that's our next argument for Robert's physique. A real life Batman would train for performance and not aesthetics. If Batman were real, he would need to train to have a balance of explosive power, insane cardiovascular endurance, raw strength, and pretty much every other aspect of fitness that you can develop. So Batman definitely wouldn't be caught doing any bodybuilding bro splits. His training would be a mix of hang cleans, heavy kettlebell swings, the big three powerlifting movements, sprints, agility work, and long distance runs. By the way, this program actually sounds pretty sick. So if you want me to make a full video on how Batman would train in real life, comment Batman jacked down below. So while this is a pretty solid argument on the surface, I think it's pretty quickly defeated by our final argument against Robert's physique. Two years of running around, fighting, and training all night long would get you pretty jacked. So in the last argument for Robert's physique, I talked about the fact that a real life Batman would be training to improve all aspects of his fitness, but he wouldn't be at all focused on aesthetics. So what would someone who trained like this really look like in real life? Well, luckily for us, we don't need to speculate because there is a sport where you need to train for all aspects of fitness, CrossFit. Every year, the top 40 male and female CrossFitters from across the globe come together to compete in the CrossFit games. But every year is different and they won't know exactly what events they're competing in until they get there. Are they gonna be doing some kind of triathlon, doing a one rep max deadlift competition, or seeing who can drag some dead bodies the fastest? Who knows? But they need to be sure they're ready for anything by training all the exact same stuff that a real Batman would have to train for, minus the, the actual fight training. So we know a real life Batman would be insanely jacked, despite the fact that he wouldn't be training for aesthetics, because look at all the pros in the CrossFit Games, they're all jacked. And the CrossFit Games is also a tested event, so while some of them probably sneak in some PEDs, we know a lot of them, or most of them, are probably natural. Okay, so there's obviously some pretty good points to be made on either front, but at the end of the day, it's really a matter of personal opinion. Personally, I don't think how Robert looked really affected the movie at all. I loved every second of it, and I don't think I would have enjoyed it more if he was huge or looked like a jacked CrossFitter. But let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'm really interested to hear your opinions. Now, if you want another opportunity to argue about Batman and fitness, go check out the first episode of my new show, Celebrity Fitness Showdown, where we compare Ben's and Bale's physical prep for Batman and see who did a better job. See you there.